if you've got a great nutrition plan, let's just say you're eating fantastically for your body type and for mm-hmm. who you are, but you're not exercising or sleeping well, it doesn't, it's, who cares? Or if you're not exercising or if you are exercising, but you're not sleeping well, no one cares. Mm-hmm. Stop posting. <laughs> it's going to be hard to really make progress too if you're just sleep deprived in general what does some oh. of the literature kind of show on that like in terms of I guess let's just take like academics something that mm. no one cares about but <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does the literature kind of show when people are like sleep deprived and they're trying to take tests and they're trying to get through school and stuff like that oh look sleep deprivation is a, now known as a carcinogen okay so we oh, really? it's really 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 bad Mm -hmm. okay and i always i always say that even being awake when you think about the brain it's like being awake is like low level brain damage because your brain repairs during sleep so does your body um when it comes to sleep deprivation there was a study that we need to talk about and i talk about it so often in every podcast they took a group of healthy men healthy individuals had no mild cognitive impairment nothing and they deprived them of sleep and this Sleep deprivation in this study was six hours. You think about that. Like I work with a lot of portfolio managers on Wall Street and they're like, Louise, I'm only sleeping four hours. So they're severely deprived of sleep. Yeah. So six hours of sleep deprivation for one week. That's all. And guess what they found? They found a 3% change in their genome. And what does that mean? We'll get a bit further into it. Mm-hmm. We have around 25,000 genes or 20,000 genes in the human genome. Now, when these subjects were sleep deprived, they saw a dysregulation in 711 genes. So 711 uh, out of 20,000 genes is around 3% change. And what they found was half of the genes that were upregulated and other half were downregulated. The ones that were downregulated were the immunity genes. So the genes responsible for immune function, they were downregulated. So they were switched off, essentially. Mm. The ones that were upregulated were the genes responsible for growth of tumor cells. Mm, damn. Shit. So chronically depriving yourself of sleep is not just interfering with cognitive functions. We know that road accidents are happening mm-hmm. due to sleep deprivation, due to reaction time, and not even seeing a car when it's coming. So that's one thing. Not- that's how I got into my ever first car accident. I was like sleep deprived coming back from work. Mm. I closed my eyes for a few seconds. And the next thing I hit a car. Mm. I was like that 19 really at the time. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. But see, that's what's happening. Mm. And um, uh, inhibition control, like we can't control that. And your brain goes into damage control mode. Yeah. And remember your brain is not here to survive evolutionarily past the age of 40. So we, you know, it said, you know, it used to say, okay, We've done with reproduction. We're 40 years old, we're done with it. Re- we don't need to survive after that. So just the fact that we are wanting to survive past 40 and not only that thrive, mm. it takes a lot of fuel, brain fuel, I call it. And if you're sleep depriving yourself, you're just you're just behind the mark in every every way. So you're not just getting behind on these cognitive functions, you're also disrupting your genome. That's Come, that's mm. scary. Yeah. Power Project family, how's it going? So no matter what diet you're on or no matter what supplements you take, it's necessary as you get older to know what's going on under the hood. That's why I've partnered with Merrick Health. They're the premium telehealth clinic owned by Derek from More Plates, More Dates. And we have a panel that will allow you to get all of your labs done and checked in a super easy fashion. Andrew, how can they get it? Yeah, you guys got to head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. That's M A. R-E-K, health.com slash power project. And at checkout, enter promo code power project to save $101 off of this comprehensive panel. Links to them down in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. Um, everything else, I really caution against melatonin. Why? Can you explain it? This is good. Because but... it's a hormone. Yep. Well, I mean, well, I'm not going out there and just taking estrogen. <laughs> You know, I'm not just going out and getting an offer. You know, in Australia, you have to be under the age of 60. You have to be prescribed melatonin. Good for you guys. Yeah. So so what happens? Because a lot of interesting though, vitamin D is recommended a lot, right? Mm. And it's a hormone, Mm. right? It is. But uh, this is a a bit different. I think Mm. that um, it has major correlations in the growth uh, of kids as well. So there's a lot of mothers out there just giving their kids Mm. melatonin. It's a naturally secreting hormone that gets secreted in response to darkness. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you overstimulate the pineal gland to keep, you know, producing, Mm. it'll, it'll not produce it naturally. 
there's just things that we can do by going out and getting sunlight yeah. every yeah. single day. Stuff is so interesting because we take stuff to like rev ourselves up, you know, mm-hmm. and then like to take something to like calm back down. It kind of depending on what it is, I guess we kind of view as bad. But, uh, you know, to me, like if you're drinking a cup of coffee in the morning and you're taking a pre-workout to get yourself fired up to work out and you need to take some melatonin here and there, I don't see really the major harm. Yeah. What if it's like, I've heard some people recommend like taking it earlier. Do you think that that would be of any? In the day? Yeah. Like not taking it like midday, but like taking it, you know, because I think the fear is that you're kind of throwing off your whole cycle. Mm. But what if you were to take it at like 5 or 6 p.m. and you go to bed at like 9 or something like that? I don't know. Well, everybody's different. The way that we, you know, metabolize different vitamins is different. But Mm -hmm. here's the thing. The biggest issue with melatonin is a lot of the labels now say, okay, this is 5 milligrams, when in actual fact it's 100 times the amount. Mm. They're just – so they're lying on the labels first and foremost. So you may be taking Mm -hmm. 500 milligrams. You don't know what you're taking. That's the first thing. That's why supplement control – is something that we need to be speaking about, you know, making sure that your supplements are going through third party testing yeah. you know, two or three times being like double certified or triple certified if you can. Um, but, you know, taking it, you know, at 5 PM, depending on what dosage you have and everything, it might just start to get you sleepy. Mm-hmm. But I, the only time I will take it is when I'm traveling to and from Australia just to get back on the time zone. So I've been, I got to Australia five, I uh, got to America five days ago from Australia, mm-hmm. landed in LA and I supplemented with just 2.5 milligrams, as it says on the bottle mm-hmm. for three nights. And that got me back on track. Hey guys, if you like this clip, go ahead and comment down below and let us know what you liked about it. All right. Share this with a friend, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also we are on Reddit and discord. All that's down below. All our sponsors and everyone that supports us down below there too. So you can get whatever you like from us. All right. Peace.